Look at that, Edmund. Look at the weird creature. What have we unearthed here? Hmm. Clearly, it must have been a Diplodocus. But yes, it's not a Diplodocus. Clearly, no, 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 it's not. This is a flying creature. This is a pterosaur. No. Yeah, of course, of course, you are right, Edmund. It's not a pterosaur. Look at the heavy bones. No, no. This clearly is a hunter. It's a raptor. No. Look at the teeth. Sir Gregor. What? Look behind you. A raptor behind me, you said. Oh my god. What? Ah, well. Hello there. We here are the Expeditionary Force, reporting for the 7 Days of Science YouTube show. Let's introduce ourselves first. I am Sir Gregory of Cornwall, and this is my trusted sub Edmund. We have come here, in the colonies, to research, to find new species. And do some colonizing in our spare time. Come on Edmund, don't need to say that. Well there, I like that you take a keen interest in our research. But, you do not have to wait any longer. Here are our findings in the following video. So, our best regards and roll the clip! Starting off the news this week, research from numerous international universities about the idea that electric cars could increase net carbon emissions has been published. One argument that many use against the implementation of electric cars to eventually replace petrol and diesel cars is that once the manufacturing and electricity generation emissions are taken into account, they are actually more damaging to the environment than petrol and diesel cars. The research has concluded that even if the generation of the electricity involves fossil fuels, then in most places electric cars produce overall fewer emissions. In places like Sweden and France, where most electricity generation is nuclear or renewable, the emissions can be 70% lower. The research brands the myths that electric cars are on balance worse, dangerous. Next up is the amazing discovery of the oldest bilaterian animal known to science. Bilaterians, animals with two openings and a gut that run through them, like us, are predicted to have started off as simple and small creatures. Before now, such organisms were hard to identify in the fossil record, but in theory they would have been present in the Ediacaran biota of Australia, where some of the earliest complex communities of animals are known from. Now, the new species of Icaria wariutia has been named from the Ediacara member, an organism that matches the predictions for what a very early bilaterian would look like. This organism has also been linked with certain trace fossils known from the Ediacaran and Cambrian, therefore providing a unique link between the animals of these two time periods. Thanks Doug. Well we've got some great news for pterosaur lovers this week, as another new genus and species has just been named from the Cretaceous aged Chemchem beds of Morocco. Named Afrotapihara zauri, this new taxon is, perhaps not too surprisingly, classified as a Tapiharid, actually making it the first definite occurrence of the Tapiharidae family known from Africa. The specimen this new pterosaur is based on is composed of a partial snout fragment which displays some key Tapiharid features, but also shows characteristics unique to this group, confirming that this is a new genus. Also in the news is the recent discovery of a highly significant bird fossil from the Cretaceous, and this one is definitely a bird this time. Asteriornis maastrichtensis, from the Maastrichtian of Belgium. The paper describing this new find explains how our knowledge about the early evolution of crown birds, that is, the most recent common ancestor of every living bird and all its descendants, is highly limited by the sparse fossil record of these avians in the Mesozoic, and that the first divergences among crown birds are known to have happened in this time period, but basal examples of the main divisions within crown birds have so far been unknown from the Mesozoic. Until now, that is, as it turns out that Asterionis occupies a position just outside Galloan Serai, the fowl such as chickens, turkeys, pheasants, and others, plus the waterfowl. This newly named bird therefore fills in a key gap in our understanding of avian evolution. Additionally, the fossil is pretty well preserved, being composed of an almost complete, three-dimensionally preserved skull and some associated body elements. The fact that it was found in the Northern Hemisphere also challenges the hypothesis that crown birds originated in Gondwana, and the small size of Asterionis and its possible shoreline ecology could support proposed ideas for how crown birds survived the end Cretaceous extinction. A very exciting discovery indeed. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. How are you finding quarantine? 
nope, of course he's, he's not even there. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this week's episode of Seven Days of Science. We'd just like to very quickly recommend that you have a look at a channel called Nitrogen and the Amazing Technicolor Lab Coat, linked in the description. This is someone who's been helping with the Atom Festival and has just started a channel. Her channel description really says it best. Her ambition is to make science easy and accessible to children, helping to inspire the future generation of scientists and has been on this mission since 2011. Through her entrepreneurial efforts of running science after school clubs, workshops, shows and parties with Bright Sparks Science and Bright Sparks Events Limited, she has developed some simple science experiments which children can do at home. These videos are a culmination of years of developing science craft and testing out ideas with local primary aged children. Each video features a link to downloadable resources which we hope you will enjoy. So please go and check it out and say hi from us. In the meantime, have a safe week and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.